I want to greet all of you from Jerusalem, the eternal, undivided capital of Israel. It will never be divided again. Pastor Hagee, I want to thank you for your enduring, tremendous support. For decades, you've been leading the effort to strengthen support for Israel within the Christian community. And I remember when you began, once you were one of a handful of brave voices in the wilderness. But thanks to your leadership, now there are millions and millions of devout Christians who stand with Israel. So I want to thank you on behalf of all the people of Israel, and I want to thank the thousands of you who have come to Washington from across America to stand with Israel. You came from, you came to Washington, D.C., and I salute you from Jerusalem, D.C., Jerusalem, David's capital. Thank you. Minister, we're going to try something we've not ever done before and just have a little chat between the two of us over national television. People who are here are concerned about Iran and they're breaking the limits on the uranium enrichment. What are your thoughts about that? perspective on this. First, the deal was always based on a lie that Iran was not seeking nuclear weapons. And we exposed that lie when we, uh, we sent our brave operatives to the heart of Tehran and brought back the secret atomic archive of Iran. And it just showed that they've been working on developing atomic bombs as early as 20 years ago. So the deal is not only based on a lie, it's a terrible deal because it gave Iran a path to getting a nuclear arsenal when the restrictions on Iran's nuclear programs were removed. It didn't block Iran's path to the bomb. It paved it. In fact, it failed to solve the one problem it was supposed to solve. Now, it made other problems worse by removing sanctions on Iran thereby helping Iran fuel its war machine in the region. See, when you remove the sanctions, Iran got billions and billions, tens of billions of dollars, potentially hundreds of billions of dollars to fund its aggression. So it's so important that President Trump decided boldly to leave this bad deal. He decided to restore sanctions, and Israel is deeply grateful for that because this is vital for Israel's security for the security of the region, for the security of the United States, for the security of the world. Now Iran is trying to uh, lash out to reduce the pressure. They attack tankers, they down American drones, they're firing missiles at uh, their neighbors. And it's important to respond to these actions, not by reducing the pressure, but by increasing the pressure. And we have to continue to take away the regime's sources of revenue and its ability to fund terrorism. Uh, yeah, you can, you can applaud that. I, I think the President Trump did a very effort, but Britain did it. Absolutely. What Britain did in interdicting the ship laden with Iranian oil bound for Syria, that was important. And now we were informed that Iran is brazenly violating the deal. So it's time for Europe to do what they promised to do. They promised to leave the deal and snap back sanctions if Iran did this. And I said, that's the way you stop aggression. You know, I, I gave uh, an instance yesterday in the Israeli cabinet. And I, I said, you know how World War II started in Europe? In my opinion, it started in the 30s when 
Nazi Germany decided to violate a solemn commitment they had given the international community, and they walked into the Rhineland, nobody said anything. Nobody did anything. And you know the continuation. You know what followed. We should stand up to Iran's aggression now, and Europe should back the sanctions Mr. Prime Minister, could you give us your thoughts about the Israel-U.S. relationship under President Trump? They have never been strong, and I deeply appreciate all President Trump has done. The U.S. and the U.S. have just said in the spoke center. He recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and he moved the embassy. He recognized Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights and he showed his rock solid support of the world. And of course, I have to add that he's. Uh, given us generous assistance to, uh, to give us the tools we need to defend ourselves by ourselves and this has been backed up by Congress, by both sides of the aisle and we are deeply, deeply grateful for that. Let me just add that President Trump has a fantastic team. Uh, he's got Vice President Pence, there is Secretary of State Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton, Jared Kushner, Jason Greenblatt, David Friedman. These are exceptional people, and I work with them, and I intend to work with him over the next two and a half years to deepen the cooperation across the board. Intelligence sharing, cyber, you name it, we're doing it. And I believe we're just scratching the surface of what we can do together. I think it's clear. A simple truth is clear. Israel has no better ally than the United States, and I believe the United States has no better ally than Israel. And this is to this last question. Uh, concerning Jerusalem, what does it mean to you, to the Jewish people, for the U.S. Embassy to move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem? It's, uh, it's a historic proclamation. Uh, it, it ought to be obvious it is historically obvious, but it's a fact that none of the previous presidents, even though they may have believed it, acted on it. And when President Trump proclaimed Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved the embassy there, I put it alongside the historic proclamations recognizing Israel's independence by President Truman, the Balfour Declaration, a hundred years ago. And guess what? And I think you're, uh, the audience uh, in Washington can appreciate this. You remember the Cyrus Declaration? The proclamation that said to the exiles in Babylon, you can come back to Jerusalem? Well, I think that this is a historic proclamation. And I deeply appreciate it, as do the people of Israel. Now. Last week, we opened the pilgrimage road that I think the previous uh, speaker, Zev Ornstein, began to talk about. This is the same road where hundreds of thousands of my ancestors ascended to the temple. This is the same road 
where Jesus walked from the Siloam pool to the temple. It's exactly that spot. So that's been buried for centuries. You can't bury the truth forever. It's time to tell the world the truth. Israel, wherever, Jerusalem is the center of our religious and national life for 3,000 years. No people has had a connection to this land and this city like the Jews have to Israel and Jerusalem. The Jewish people are the only people in the world that have the same land, the same religion, the same capital, the same language, and the same name for their land and themselves as they had 3,000 years ago. That's some connection. It's time the UN and the international community recognize what President Trump put so clearly. Jerusalem has been and will always be the capital of the state of Israel. Sincerely appreciate your time today. Please know that you, the State of Israel, and the City of Jerusalem are in our prayers for God's blessings and continuance of prosperity in every way. God bless you, sir, and thank you for being with us today.